Evergreen uh, with the 90 essential uh, uh, minerals, the Mighty 90, and the key vitamins, all in just a couple scoops a day in your water. It tastes great. Uh, the Pollen Burst, uh, and, of course, the Rebound, and hundreds of other products. Those are the ones I really love. All available at InfoWarsTeam.com. You can become a distributor and sign up today. I know because I'm on the road and on via Skype. We got a few glitches today, and I apologize for that, but overall, it's great. Great job of the crew as we try to tweak all this. Uh, but I will say that since we went to another system five minutes ago, so we can get Gerald Salente on via Skype as well, I may not be able to do it because I'm getting incredible feedback and basically uh, submarine noises and Cylon Raiders invading uh, sounds. This is actually pretty cool for like a video game or something. Uh, it would be, but it's like, so I can handle this while I take callers. I can handle this noise. I just want to make sure that's not going out over air. Uh, okay, and then when you talk to me, it's unintelligible. It's like a Cylon Raider. Uh, but I like this. This is the new. I love all the new fancy equipment. It's like a Cylon Raiders that are attacking from Mars. Good old fashioned Skype. We can have another Skype guest up. But uh, anyways, uh, let's go. Ahead. Oh, it's gone. The Cylon Raiders are gone. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's uh, go back to the calls here. Uh, let's go to John in Georgia. John, thanks for holding. Welcome. How are you doing today? Good. Awesome. Um, I have, like, two things I wanted to tell you about. One, I'm a delegate for uh, Ron Paul for uh, Precinct 6 of, delegate, uh, of District 9 in Georgia. And the outcome that we had uh, for support of Ron Paul at the delegate and mass precinct meeting was massive. There were all types of people from everywhere uh, supporting Ron Paul. Uh, even when Newt Gingrich came in and gave a speech, Herman Cain was there to introduce him. Um, and uh, the, all the trendies that you talk about that were supporting Ron Paul for the media to cover and like, oh, look at all the new Gingrich supporters. They all left directly after, the, directly before the mass precinct meeting and directly before we got to choose all the delegates. So Ron Paul is winning Georgia as, as of right now. It's amazing. Well, that's right, because it's really about the delegate process. So uh, the system's cheating Ron Paul in the votes, but he's just going ahead and taking the delegates, and they're talking about a broker convention. The system is really freaked out by this. Yeah, and there's something else I want to talk about. Um, when I, I wrecked my truck about a month ago, it was in the middle of the night, and uh, there were SWAT team that came by in a tank. And I live in the middle of rural Georgia. And when I asked them, I was like, what are you guys doing? You know, this is, that's a, that's a tank. And they were like, well, uh, we're training exercises. And I was like, what are you training for, war? And they all laughed and kind of, you know, didn't pay any attention to me. But I was like, no, really, what are you training for, war? Because I've been listening to your show for like three years now. And I knew exactly what they were training for. They're preparing to take Yeah, their No, what's going on is they're trying to make the police feel basically federalized and feel invincible. And it's about intimidation of the public. They've had police chiefs admit to black uniforms, the ski mask are all for that. And they are trying to take on refuse next people that don't turn their farms and ranches over when the property tax, you know, gets tripled. People that, you know, are gonna be forced off their land. And they're training with an iron fist to attack rural areas. The thing is, if it ever goes to civil war, people aren't gonna wait for the armored vehicle you know, the Marine fighting vehicle, the, the, you know, the warrior vehicle or the Bradley to show up. Uh, people are going to go out and find people that work for the system. And so that needs to be understood. We're not just going to wait for you to come firebomb our house and, you know, send in your combat robot or whatever it is. It's not going to work that way. And so, yeah, they're trying to hype the cops up, you know, to feel invincible um, and, you know, festoon themselves in body armor suits and the rest of it. And uh, nothing can stop initiative. And no amount of robots or any of it's going to stop anybody if this goes to civil war, other than their super bio weapons. And then that kills most people above ground. Out of ground later, whoever survives, he's remember, it's the globalists that did it. Anything else, sir? Uh, thank you very much for doing your radio show and all of your TV. And um, we're really, really supporting you here in Georgia. Just uh, giving a shout out to you. Thank you very much. Well, God bless you, my friend. Folks, should I go to another caller before we go to Salente? Okay, thank you. 
um, it was kind of cool now. Now I complained about the Cylon Raider thing, and now I kind of liked it. It's like awesome sounds. You know that sonar sound? It was that sound with like all sorts of other stuff. I don't know how computers make such cool noises, but it's like whatever language these things have got, it's like really weird. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, talk to... Uh, Actually, all these crazy scripts, they've kind of been entertaining for me. I hope it's been entertaining for the audience. Uh, we're beta testing stuff. It's like NASA here. Uh, let's talk to Scott in Texas. Scott, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, Alex. Yeah, real quick. Uh, it seems odd to me that Iran and the other nations that are on the hit list would just sit back and wait to be annihilated by the U.S. military. Seems to me like they would be going after these banking families with their intelligence agencies to try to prevent uh, what they're doing behind, you know, behind closed doors. Well, you know who founded the CIA. It's who founded the OSS with the Brits in 1947. It's on record. I mean, they've even made historical films like The Good Shepherd put out by, by Robert De Niro, where the CIA is set up from top to mid-level by Skull and Bones people. Uh, and then that set up the other 15 agencies, and it's all from Yale and Harvard and Princeton, and they're all sent to get Rhodes scholarships and be taught by British intelligence, and they're funded by the Rothschilds and others. And so all these agencies are run by the dope smuggling you know, globalists. The British East India Company, Skull and Bones, got set up by that. And so at the top, and they operate with total secrecy, and then they put in hitmen and people below them, and then they just operate. So that's why, despite all that, we've had the last two Joint Chiefs of State before that, the head of CENTCOM, say no to an Iran attack and no to Cheney attacking our own ships. You know, Ray McGovern, when he said, look for them to stage a straight of Hormuz with fake patrol boats attacking our ships. And then it turned out right as he was saying that, Three years later, Cy Hirsch writes about White House sources with the exact thing. And, of course, McGovern's like, oh, I'm just guessing that's it. No, I mean, a real former top CIA analyst like he was to Reagan and Bush will always say, oh, it's just my hunch. He has sources, folks. But it did come out that that was the whole plan. So the military did say and the Navy SEALs did say, no, we're not going to go up and attack our own ship. They're like, oh, just shoot some rockets at it. It'll be all right. You know, you know, the, you know the hull is strong enough to take them. And they're like, well, what if we get blown away? by the ship and they're just like do it and they said no so that's why they're going to drones and robots they're just going to paint drones up like iranian aircraft or russian in the future and fly them into buildings again and and, and then where are we then why doesn't the iranian intelligence agency or the pakistani why don't they go after these banking families because they know that the oh is that what you said oh, oh you know what i'm sorry your audio is higher now oh so i'm corrected you're saying why doesn't the iranian and i thought you said ours the u.s military to come blow them off the map and they have very good intelligence services but it seems like they're just totally ignoring the rothschild banking family and all those families that somebody like fritz springmeyer you know brings to light yeah i stand corrected your audio was low i missed what you said that's a good question. Why don't the Russians, the Chinese, the Iranians go after the global heads? Uh, the Russians, I'm not saying are perfect, but they do pay people to have kids, the opposite of eugenics. They have arrested most of the oligarchs and just became oligarchs themselves. And it turned out most of them did work for the Rothschilds. That's even been adjudicated in, in court in England a few weeks ago. The Rothschilds were suing folks over saying that. But it was proven in court that they really are puppet masters. Uh, and I think it's because they're so infiltrated, and they also know if you do try that, they would just go ahead and nuke Iran and wouldn't care one way or another. You see, the bankers have the space-based weapons. They have the nukes. They have it all. Uh, and so that's why they're so arrogant. But, but at a certain point, if Iran, Russia, and again, China, who's deeply in bed with the Illuminati, China, the wild card. Um, heavily infiltrated, heavily corrupt, but, but not from my deep study. Under the Soviets, it was more connected to the New World Order than it is now. Uh, things have really gotten out of control for the globalists. That's why they're trying to overthrow Russia right now. Uh, and I'm not saying if Russia could defeat the New World Order, they'd be nice either. This is the nature of corruption. Um, but Russia, uh, uh, that's certainly going on, sir. Anything else? Love the show. Well, we love you, my friend. We love you, the great listeners out there uh, that are taking action. We're going to go to break here in a moment. See, we get 
uh, Gerald Salente, uh, on with us, and then we will continue uh, with your phone calls. And uh, again, the crew's doing a wonderful job. Uh, it is uh, quite a trick to be able to have him via Skype and me via, via Skype because we got several backups here. And so we're going to come back after break. Remember, the system's censoring everything we're doing, trying to block us. They're censoring Ron Paul. Redouble your efforts on Ron Paul and getting the word out about InfoWars.com and this hardcore radio transmission. There's none other like it on Earth. And please, uh, make hay while the sun shines. Help spread the word today before the next phase comes in. Folks. Hey, there's uh, Jimmy Vaughn, another Ron Paul supporter patriot from Austin, Texas. I saw Jimmy a couple weeks ago. Uh, we had a little snack, uh, and I was twisting his arm to come in and play some uh, acoustic songs for us. Maybe he'll do that if you're out there listening, Jimmy. <laughs> but uh, going to Gerald Salente for the balance of this hour, joining us via video Skype as well. I'm on the road from Baton Rouge. Gerald, out of the gates, I want to get into the world economy. I want to get into all, all the huge developments we're seeing take place. But what do you make of Ron Paul and the fact that they admit they didn't count all the counties where he was leading in the polls in Maine, cheated him in Iowa? Ron Paul's saying, yeah, we're contesting this. But I think Ron Paul should make a bigger deal out of this. Uh, what do you think of what's going on with Ron Paul? Well, it's what's been going on for a long time. Remember the uh, go back to the Kennedy election, for God's sakes, when they when they rigged it in Illinois, you know, the place where Obama's from. Go back to 2000. You remember the election in the hanging chads in Florida, the corruption in Ohio, the votes they didn't count in Iowa. I mean, come on. Doesn't anybody get it by now? And one of the problems I have with Ron Paul is that he doesn't fight back hard enough. And so it's really, it's just business as usual. But before I continue, Alex, I, I want to let you know, I just came back from, Cal to, from Calgary, Canada uh, this morning, and um, I did a talk up there. And I want you to know that you have a load of fans up there. Everywhere I went, people were coming up to me, and so many of them said, please say hello to Alex Jones for me. They love your show. Well, thank you. It is uh, really an indicator of how many people are awake just by how anywhere I go, including here in Baton Rouge. I've had people come up to me last night and today, and I haven't run into very many people. This looks like it's a sparsely populated area where I'm at, but about half the folks I've walked by, it turns out, our listeners are familiar, and I know you're running into that yourself. So it shows there's this, this, this paradox of awakening happening. But at the same time, the system's playing like that's not happening, uh, and it's business as usual. So where do you see this going, Gerald? Well, the important thing is, is look who comes up to you and, and a lot of people that come up to me. You know, they call these young people Generation Zero. I don't. I call them Generation Courage. Those are the people. You know, this is different than the old feudal days, Alex, when the kings and queens of commerce had a lot of uneducated peasants out there that they could keep grinding into the dirt. These are very educated young people. They're aware. They know what's coming down and what's going on. And they're the ones that are tuned in, and they're the ones that are going to make the difference. Because people my age, I mean, they've given up already. You know, they've sold out, they've been bought and out, or they're down and out. So they don't have the fight anymore. So it's your audience and my audience that are going to make the difference. They don't want to take anybody's baloney, and they're educated enough to know what's going on. So as you began this in talking about, oh, they're having trouble, you know, counting ballots. Yeah, what's new? You know, the same political corruption gang is in control. And as I keep saying, as we're moving closer to this election, idiots are going to say, well, you know, I'm going to vote for this one or that one because they're the lesser of two evil. What self-respecting adult?